let's put it this way, if we go back to the ancient Greeks, you find that there were two major theories of the universe, two major worldviews, if we might put it that way. The one worldview says that mass and energy are the only things that exist. And so everything has got to be explicable by definition in terms of mass and energy, bottom up. There's no transcendence. And people like Democritus and Leucippus, the fathers of the atomic theory, believed in that. And there are many people who believe it today. We call them materialists. The other worldview, which was held by Plato and Socrates and Aristotle and a whole range of thinkers throughout the centuries, is that mass and energy aren't the only things that exist. In fact, there's transcendence. There are the gods or there is God from where I sit. There is God who is a creator and upholder of the universe. And those two distinct worldviews come barreling up through history and they collide in the modern academy. And that's why it's so hotly disputed because there are many people with scientific training who think that the only conceivable worldview is the materialistic worldview. And they are intent in fighting against and in some cases trying to suppress the religious worldview, the dimension that there is a God and that of course we must factor him into understanding the nature of our own identity. Why should people care about this question? And one can understand that when people are doing well in life, they've got a good job, they've got a nice family, uh, and so on. They think that these issues are superfluous. But, you know, that's a very superficial attitude. Once they get struck with a serious illness, cancer for instance, I discover that such people very rapidly begin to ask bigger questions. You know, it's all very well to say, well, I feel fine, I've got a good job and so on and so forth. But not to ask the question, what is true about my situation, could be very risky. For example, a person lying on a beach, enjoying the sun and the wind and the, the wonderful atmosphere, the smell of the sea, could be feeling wonderful. But I'm standing on the cliff and I see a tsunami approaching. Now they're feeling fine and they don't see any danger at all, but there is real danger. And, and therefore I feel most people I talk to in their quieter moments, they wonder, well, what's the whole thing about? What is the truth about reality? And it's not enough to feed the human being simply on material possessions, a good job and so on. Sooner or later, the kick that those give will run out and people will start to ask the deeper questions. I think the much more rational approach is to start by asking those deeper questions because perhaps by answering them you might get a lot more out of life than you thought. I think what one can expect to gain out of this kind of a conference, which I'm looking forward to immensely, is an expansion of one's thought life for a start. I mean, one of the most thrilling things to my mind is the scientific work I do in mathematics, that God has created a universe that stretches way beyond our ability to comprehend it. But he has encouraged us to study it. It's often forgotten that Genesis describes the origin of science in that, according to what it says, God commanded the first humans to name the animals. That's the beginning of taxonomy and biology and so on. And all science involves inventing names, involves taxonomy and so on. So here's a mandate to get on with thinking about the universe. Now, ever since I was a boy, passionate about science on the one hand and languages on the other, I've been interested in fitting all this into a bigger picture. And one of the opportunities of a conference like this is to hear thinkers coming from different directions, putting the whole question of science and philosophy into that bigger world picture and therefore informing our worldview. Now, in my visits to the United States in the last few years, I detect enormous interest in these questions. I find thousands of people attending the lectures with lengthy Q&A, which is very engaging. So I feel these conferences provide a wonderful opportunity of exposing ourselves to good thinking and to educate ourselves in good thinking. And for the Christian, it's so important for us to realize that you don't have to commit intellectual suicide to be a Christian. In fact, it's the exact opposite. We ought to be at the vanguard of thinking. People like C.S. Lewis in the past, 
who taught us how to think Christianly about the world. And this conference has that same objective in the 21st century. Mm -hmm.